Hi everyone, welcome to week 12. Today we're going to talk about exercise at altitude, but before we begin, I want to remind you that this was the last online lecture for exercise physiology. It's been a pleasure to teach you and a very eventful semester nonetheless. So to begin, I um, want to make sure that you're ready for your final term test, which is next Friday at our same class time. So this will be 50 multiple choice and true answer questions. The content will be from week 10 to week 12 inclusive, both online and uh, in class material. As a reminder, this is your final formal evaluation for the course. So you've already done your previous two term tests, you've completed the lab component, and now you have this final term test to complete. Uh, just a reminder that this test will be on Respondus Lockdown, so you have to make sure that you have a working computer and that your Respondus uh, browser is up to date. Ensure that y your cell phone and anything else in the room that you're using is on the airplane mode so it's not uh, interfering or competing for the bandwidth for your Wi-Fi. As well, I will be sending out via an announcement on Blackboard the password for access um, to the test. Remember, the test bank is over 100 questions and it's randomized. So everybody will have a different test, uh, def different multiple choice and or true and false question test. This will be a time test. So again, just like in class, you have 80 minutes to complete. However, it will automatically submit if at 80 minutes. So even if, if you're not fully done at 80 minutes, it's going to submit that uh, and it will be graded accordingly. So ensure that you're done in 80 minutes and you hopefully submit it before it auto submits for you. Lastly, uh, there's a new piece of software that's been put into Respondus, which is called Respondus Monitor. And this uh, uses access to your webcam to ensure you're not cheating. So uh, as such, because you have to do your evaluation at home, this will just keep track of chatter as well as um, any, if you're looking at test material, uh, your, your, your content from the lecture, um, content from the class, it will indicate and it, I will get notified. Okay, so those little pieces are put in place to ensure um, validity and ensure that you're not cheating and it's a, in, um, a fair evaluation of your knowledge level in the course. Okay, thanks so much. Let's get started. So for today, we're going to look at the environmental conditions at altitude, the physiological responses to acute altitude exposure, and some optimization of training and strategies to improve performance using altitude. There are three key principles that are important when we look at altitude. The first one is barometric pressure, the partial pressure of oxygen, and hypobaria. So first of all, the barometric pressure is approximately 760 millimeters of mercury at sea level. That's important to know, and you need to remember that. Secondly, I want you to look at the partial pressure of oxygen, which is PO2. This is a portion of the barometric pressure exerted by oxygen, and it's calculated by taking the concentration of oxygen in our atmospheric air and dividing it by 100. So we get 0 0.2093 times the barometric pressure, which is equal to approximately 159 millimeters of mercury at sea level. This is known as the partial pressure of oxygen at sea level. Now we can calculate this for any barometric pressure by timesing 0 0.2093 times the barometric pressure at any altitude. And you can calculate the partial pressure of oxygen. So when we are at altitude, we do have a reduced partial pressure of oxygen. And remember, this is the driver. This is the pressure is the driver for which oxygen moves from the atmospheric air into our alveoli, and then that pressure drives oxygen into our capillary. So this is reduced at altitude, which limits human performance. The next term I want to introduce is something called hypobaria. And this means, hypo meaning low, and baria meaning pressure. So at altitude, we have a reduced partial pressure, or hypobaria, at, at altitude. And the result of this is hypoxia, which is a decrease in oxygen concentration within the body, and hypoxemia, which is a significant decrease in the oxygen within the blood. 
the carrying capacity of hemoglobin. Now let's define some of the environmental conditions at altitude. So sea level is considered anything less than 500 meters. And this really has no effects, no adverse effects on human functioning. Low altitude is defined as anything from 500 to 200 meters. And this also does not affect well-being. However, performance, especially exercise performance, where you're really stressing that upper limit of physiology, performance may be decreased. And this is restored when an individual acclimates or acclimatization, where acclimatization was when you adapt to the environment. Uh, acclimation is when you adapt to an artificial environment. The next is moderate altitude, and this is defined by um, an altitude of 2,000 to 3,000 meters. And this does affect well-being in unacclimated people at rest. And then because of that, we know that once someone starts exercising, performance and aerobic capacity decreases. So performance may or may not be restored by acclimation. And this is where we start to see positive responders and non-responders to altitude. Some people will adapt and others genetically just will not adapt and will not decrease or improve performance as a result of acclimation. Now let's continue on. High altitude is defined of 3,000 to 5,500 meters, and this results in acute mountain sickness. It's quite uh, symptomatic of being at high altitude. Performance is decreased, and it is not restored by acclimation. Next, there's extremely high altitude, or extreme high altitude, which is greater than 5,500 meters, where we see severe hypoxic events and effects. The highest settlements are 5,200 to 5,800 meters. And then for the per our purposes, altitude of anything greater than 1,500 meters, this equates to 4,921 feet or higher, have a notable physiological impact on exercise performance. Anything less than 1,500 meters does not have a significant physiological effect. So altitude presents a hypobaric, a low pressure environment, one in which the atmospheric barometric pressure is reduced. So any altitude of 1500 meters or 4921 feet or higher have a notable physiological impact on exercise performance. Although the percentages of the gases in the air that we breathe remain constant, regardless of altitude, the partial pressure of each of these gases decreases with the decreased barometric pressure at higher altitudes. So we have the same air composition of 20.93% oxygen, 0.03% CO2, and 79.04% nitrogen. This does not change even at altitude. What changes is the barometric pressure is the variable here and that affects the partial pressure of O2. Okay, so at sea level, we have a partial pressure in the atmosphere of 159 millimeters of mercury, compared to at uh, Mount Everest, which is 52 millimeters of mercury. That means the driving pressure for which oxygen moves into the alveoli and then into the capillary is decreased. So this means the pressure of O2 in the lungs the blood and the tissues is affected by the partial pressure of O2. The lower partial pressure of oxygen in the air at altitude is the environmental condition with the most profound physiological impact. Because the partial pressure of O2 in the lungs is low, the partial pressure gradient between the alveoli of the lungs and the blood where oxygen is loaded and between the blood and the tissues where oxygen is unloaded is decreased. This slide provides a great summary of the changes in altitude at different common locations. You can see Miami, Florida, which is at sea level, Denver, Colorado at 1600 meters, Mexico City at 2200 meters, Hikes Peak at 4300 meters, and Mount Everest at 8848 meters. The main variable that I want you to see 
is change the changes in barometric pressure with no change in the percent of oxygen in the atmospheric air. It is always 20.93%. However, what changes is the driving force, the driving pressure, the partial pressure of oxygen in the air, which provides the driving force to get oxygen in the body. As you increase in altitude, you decrease the partial pressure, and you should see this in the chart, and thus the force to move oxygen into the alveoli and then unload it into the capillary, transfer it throughout your body to the working muscle, the working tissue, and unload it at the skeletal muscle is compromised. So gas exchange is reduced as well as gas exchange at the skeletal muscle.